Again with Legacy FA, it's awesome to say Legacy Fighting Alliance. This is going to be Legacy LFA One with Damon Lee Jackson. He's going to be the co-main event with Steven Ocho Peterson. We are here at Forty Seven May, and you can see behind us we got some good music going. But I'm here with Damon. We're going to talk to him a little bit, you know, about what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. Because a lot of people just assume that people just show up to come to fight. But you know, as far as you're concerned, you're a coach, yeah. you're a trainer, yeah. you know, you're a father. You know, I see you at the soccer fields a lot. So tell us like what goes into it on a day, you know, a day for you. Yeah, I mean it's, it's always something to do. I mean, I'm definitely up here, you know, I start my day off usually at six AM and go through, you know, training. I train usually about two or three clients before I train myself, usually uh, six, seven, eight, and then I go into my own training around nine or ten. And uh, you know, that by the time I'm kinda awake and ready to go and uh, knock out, you know, usually my strength and conditioning early in the morning. And then sometimes we have some people come up here and we'll grapple, but usually get my strength and conditioning out of the way. And uh, a lot of the clients that train are just like uh, you know, kickboxing, just trying to get in shape and trying to learn you know, learn some, you know, light movement stuff and then I do a lot of wrestling quiet breaks. I teach a lot of the kids just to at Fortis. And uh, you know, I direct a lot of these kids in this you know, wrestling back, you know, try to show them a little bit of wrestling. Uh, not not just strict wrestling, but you know, well rounded jiu-jitsu games kind of what we're looking for with the kids. And uh, I bring my kids up here myself and yeah, we have a kids fitness class up here and it's just like the funnest thing to see. I saw, I saw some it's of those you're like serious with the no, kids. Yeah. <laughs> I mean I, I play hard with them, but you yeah. know, it's all fun and games. Like I mean I'm making them play games and they, they don't even know they're working out. Yeah. Time. So it works out good for the fans because they just love coming here. And, you know, kids love it being in here around the fighters. You know, mm -hmm. you know everybody has like a, a bad a, you know bad look at fighters sometimes, but a lot of guys just like yeah. getting here and have fun with the kids too. And uh, you know, it's, a, it's good for the kids to get in here and learn a little bit of self defense and also like, get in shape too. Uh, but yeah, you away from the video. Yeah, yeah and I'm staying in here all day. I, you know, I have people in and out all day, and I usually have a gap in the middle of the day where I just kind of chill out, and then I have my recovery time, and then uh, maybe one or two sessions before my final training at night. And that's pretty much like a day to day. But yeah, I do coach my uh, my daughter's soccer team. Um, you know, coach some of the jiu-jitsu up here, and then uh, all the kids up here doing the workouts and stuff like that. But, uh, a day to day, I couldn't walk you through it one day. It's all yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. Yeah, definitely understood. So, you know, I did see you. Uh, you were up in Oklahoma, you know, at the, one of the schools talking yeah. to the kids. You know, what are the kinds of things? I think a lot of people, like, might, might see you in front of the camera, they see you in the cage, but, yeah. you know, they don't see, you know, like you're helping the kids, maybe like good words. And yeah, no, I, I mean, like, uh, you know, you can always relate to someone, like, and uh, if I can do that positively, like, you know, push something out, that, like, one of these kids has, like, they click with it and they run with it and they listen to what I have to say mm -hmm. and they get something positive out of it you know I love it and those kids like you know you can go talk to like uh, you know a company and like you talk like, get their employees to work out like I do that on the side also I, I go in corporate wellness I go in and like teach the, the company how to work out together how to work together and how to you know have weight loss goals together and when I go in and talk to these people like these grown ups they don't listen to anything I have to say like they're just like okay I, got, I have to come here because my boss said I have to yeah. and then that was it and then like you know, these kids, they, like, they just want anything in the world, anybody to pay attention to them. And, uh, you know, you go to these boys and girls clubs, or you go, even go into just a regular school, and you go in and talk to these kids, they want to listen to everything you have to say. And if you say something positive, and it, like, it, and it reaches out to them, and they think that they can, you know, do something positive. I mean, that's what happened to me. This guy came in and did, like, a motivational speech uh, my freshman year of high school. And he was telling about how, uh, it was his phrase, it was, uh, how bad do you want it, was his phrase. And it stuck with me through all my wrestling, all of my fights. My mom, I still, like, during my fights, so I hear my mom say, she'll say, how bad do you want it? It's just something that uh, I had a piece of paper, and I wrote it down, and I put it above my bed, because that's what he did. And uh, it was just one of those things, a guy came in one week and randomly talked to our school, and he had won some contests and did some races and stuff like that. It was just a cool, positive thing that stuck with me. And I just thought it would be cool to like, kind of reach out to the kids and go out and uh, you know push some kind of positive message for them. Uh, and then also I got to get out there and mess around with the teachers. And I know some of these guys that I went to school with, they're teaching now. And I got to throw a couple of them down on the ground. Yeah, and show them that's always fun. So it's, it's fun. Yeah, it's always fun. It's always fun. Yeah. You know, so I, I've had the pleasure, I've been looking up to just to cover all these fights. Um, you know, obviously I've got some, you know, the Hunter, the, the Hunter Tucker fight, you know, yeah. I, it's one of me and my father actually were just talking about this weekend. Um, it, it, 
he got to come. I actually have a picture there with him at that fight. Yeah. Um, really exciting fight. But is, is you know which one in, in your legacy career like sticks out for you? Uh, you might think like, wow, was it be like Obi Tucker? Uh, no, it was. It was actually like a random, like, super random fight. The very first fight I had with Legacy. Uh, my entire professional career, I never got really blocked. I never really got hit with anything or anything like that. And I was actually fighting Javier Aubergine, which is like, wasn't like, you know, it was just like, it was my very first fight with UFC and I thought, or uh, with Legacy, and uh, I thought that I was gonna go on there and take this kid down and submit him quickly. And then we actually ended up fighting through a couple scrambles. And then while we were getting up, uh, I shot in on a sloppy shot and he threw a kick and it hit me and it knocked me back on my butt. Okay, and, so like uh, your first test. So like, like I was oh. like, okay, like what the hell, you know? Yeah. And then he jumped on top of me, which I was like, okay, what the hell do I do? Yeah. And I ended up scrambling out and I ended up getting him uh, like an arm triangle or a uh, grenade choke, something like a submission. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just remember that very first fight with Legacy. And then like winning, getting the finished bonus with ready every second, that was always that was cool. Like you know, it, was yeah. like, it was just like a, it, was, it felt like I was like doing something big in that one moment. But, uh, you know, that was my first big test of like making it through uh, a position where I was like, kind of like, oh crap moment. Yeah, like so, I all this Didn't really know what to do. Yeah. yeah, this is definitely caught me off guard. And so, uh, you know, that was a big, big moment for me. And then obviously the, the submission with Leonard Garcia was big because he, I was so, uh, you know, I wasn't really scared. I just wanted to perform well against him mm -hmm. because he's done so much in the sport. He's definitely like a pioneer of sorts. To a certain extent, no, I, I, sure. I know you might no. disagree a little bit, but as far as legacy, no. you know, you, you as a fighter as well, you know, because you guys are the ones that kind of got legacy, you know, you jump from the UFC. Oh, uh, well, you know, yeah, so. I, I haven't really ever slowed down enough to really think no, about yeah. what I've done. But, like, good. with Leonard, man, they do, he's been around. Yeah, he's, he's a beast. Fought, yeah. He fights tough against everybody he fights. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was awesome. It was an awesome fight. You know, yeah. I, I enjoyed, you know, getting the submission of him. I was going away. I thought it was going to be a tough fight. I thought it was going to be, like, back and forth. And I ended up getting a good position on him and then locked it up. Yeah. And it was good. Yeah, and it was but intense. Was, I think that. It was loud, you know. Everybody yeah. was going pretty nuts with that fight. Yeah. You know, a little bit about your fan base because I did see yeah, you know no, the video. Nice, yeah, your fan base is pretty awesome because yeah, I did an nice. article on yeah. you before that yeah. and that got like the most hits and I think I'm a decent writer but yeah. I don't think they were doing that because of me. You know, no, so you have it, a, a pretty solid fan so base. It's such a cool thing. I'm from a small town, uh, Durant, Oklahoma and uh, they have the it's not even a small town, you know. It's a it's a fairly big town, but it's a small mind, uh, sm small town mindset where you know everybody has your back. They're your friends. They you know they want the best for you. And for my career, uh, just like when I was very first starting amateur fights, I had people follow me on my amateur fights, and you know I didn't talk to these people. Like once I left high school and went to college, I was fighting amateur then, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I didn't talk to these people for years, and everybody was keeping up with it. They're like, "Oh, awesome fight, you know, like you know, great job." Yeah. Uh, next time you come in, I want you to sign something for my kids, and I thought mm -hmm. it was cool seeing the people I knew yeah. wanted my autograph. But these guys, I mean, they are my diehard fans, like my family. I have like some of the biggest fans yeah. in my my They're family, loud too. like over everybody, that, yeah. and everybody. They love coming to the fights. They love coming out and seeing each other at the fights. It's just mm -hmm. like it's a good gathering. And I always have like a good positive crowd with the noise that are too crazy. You know, yeah. I know some people yeah. are crazy, but We're loud, not but too yeah. crazy. It's always, you know, it's always good. And I appreciate everybody's support. You know, most definitely, most definitely, because this first like, fans are nice. loud. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so. I'm not gonna lie, you know, when we, we saw the Believe Our Bones fight was made and we were gonna have it, a lot of times talking to other people were like, okay, this is gonna be more on the ground. Yeah. And what happened? Nah, man, like, <laughs> so that's the thing, like, everybody, it's like, you know, you can't go out and do what's expected yeah. because, like, you know, these people don't wanna watch your fight. And uh, I knew that he's tough enough to, like, fight on the feet, but I really thought he was gonna be going for takedowns more. Yeah. And I wanted to be the guy to, kind of push the pace and stay on the feet mm -hmm. and you know I think we were both kind of worried about our, our each other's ground game really you know? little, yeah I got the fight I went from Kevin Aguilar which is decent grappling he's got some decent submission stuff yeah. and to Levi Mola which is that's his thing you know mm -hmm. but he's he's like you know for his age and his time mm -hmm. he's just so young in the sport nobody knows him that kid yeah. I they promise you he'll, he'll, he'll be either. a tough you know he'll be he'll be one of the top guys uh, yeah. soon you know he's not there yet but he'll be there soon but um, you know his toughness took him to that fight because yeah. I, I hit you know multiple kicks to the head and he was like he kept coming in mm -hmm. and I was really expecting him to back up and let me like set up another kick or let me set up another takedown or something and I you know once I took him down on the ground I didn't feel 
uh, like he was gonna get me anything, but I just felt like that was kind of like my time to kind of chill out. And yeah. So whenever you know, I got the fight down to the ground, you know, I felt like uh, it was okay. It was okay to uh, you know stay there, but I didn't want to get caught in something. Yeah, no, no, most definitely. Yeah, because no, he's definitely slick. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he is slick. But you know, I was saying like of all the the, the craziness that happened at uh, Legacy sixty one, that yeah. definitely took that fight. Because I was, I would say that that's when people pay sixty eighty bucks. You know, no, that bucks way, to watch. That was like, they fight. were like, uh, you know, Mark Del Rosa is not gonna show up. Yeah, he said, yeah, I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm I was like. Yeah. So, you know, what what's gonna happen? You're trying to get some there's no way they can get someone to fight here's some uh, game numbers. Yeah. It, it wouldn't well, even pass a couple of hours whatever. Yes, like, yeah. you know. And they said that and I was like, Alright, you know, like we'll do something, you know, I'll you know, fight my fight. I'm not gonna change anything. And then I was thinking about it, and I'm like, man, like I really want to make this an exciting fight and that's kinda of what my mindset yeah. was. I was okay. just ready to fight and, mm -hmm. and he was ready to fight too. Like the yeah. kids thought that was a great fight. I was, was ready to fight. stand up and fight. Mm -hmm. And that's kinda of, you know, something that people are gonna start seeing more out of me. It's just you know, I am not gonna sit here and like try to, you know, baby any fight and just get what I can when I want. Like I am gonna go forward and fight till that either get a finish or a tool does a decision or whatever it is, I'm gonna go hard for whatever I can. So that gets me excited. So LFA one is gonna be going up against Charles Chief. Um, he's been around, he's like 11 and 5, so he's, yeah. you know, what do you know about him and what, what should we expect? Um, you know, he's tough dude, he's very explosive on the feet, um, has some really good takedowns off the fence and stuff, you know, so it's something that he's, you know, he's well-rounded, he's definitely a uh, tough guy, he got a good record, and that's always something I'm looking for, yeah. is to get the best challenge that I can, because, you know, it's just like, it's a joke, like, once you make it to UFC and then once you're out, people think that you're done, mm -hmm. and it's not even close like that, because, you, know, I, I, you know, at the time when I got in the UFC, I had only been training for two years, yeah. and I made it to the UFC, had all my fights in, like, two and a half years, and I was out, and then it's like, you know, I'm just now getting to where I understand a lot of positions and I'm understanding a lot more of my striking and understanding what my actual game plan and what my skill set is. So, um, you know, it's not anything that, like, I might, you know, one fight be a stand up guy, the next fight I might, you know, say the sure. and go straight to the submission. You yeah. know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to do. I'll do what the game plan is to the fullest, and I'll you know go as hard as I can. But with Cheeks, it's going to be a tough fight, and uh, I have a feeling it's going to be you know similar to the Levi fight, where it's going to be a lot of stand up, a lot of back and forth, and, and you know some good action. I'm, I'm ready. I've always yeah. been a fan of yours, yeah. you know, so I'm ready to go. So you know, don't, don't get you know. I mean, what you hear in the music in the back, this is four to seven bang. They got a lot of people. They got people training. So definitely want to check us out. The Bond Factory. Damon Jackson's going up against uh, Charles Cheeks. You don't want to miss it. January 13th. I appreciate it, guys.